So for the month of October, I have rented out a driveway, and this is going to be my winter plan. Because I'm going to university, finding a new place to park every night, especially once the snow hits the ground, is going to be a little bit more difficult. And it's just going to give me a home base to really go back to. Um, I don't really need to be moving around all the time when I'm staying in one city. So I've paid a very small amount of rent and I get a spot um, on the driveway that I can park the van and that takes care of a lot of my issues. I get a number of advantages from this setup. Uh, big one is I'm actually saving money because I'm not spending a lot of money on gas to drive this gas guzzler around. And like I said, the home base, that's really good. Um, and I can just not have to clean up every single day and make sure that absolutely everything is, you know, strapped down and in its place. So that means I can have things loose on flat surfaces and just leave them there, which is a luxury, which I never thought I'd say was a luxury, but there you go. <laughs> One thing that doesn't really have anything to do with the parking situation, though, is solar. I have a 100 watt uh, Renogy monocrystalline panel on the roof. And it hasn't been providing me enough solar as the days continue to get shorter and shorter. I've really noticed a drop where I'm now no longer able to uh, charge my laptop even when really the, the sun is out. Uh, maybe it's the angle. It doesn't stay. Um, sh it's usually out for shorter periods of time during the summer. Uh, there was enough solar coming in to charge the laptop and keep the battery, you know, topped up. Whereas now, even when the sun's out, it will drain. So I found that I have to charge my laptop when I'm at school. It's just not the best situation. And I know that it's going to get worse, uh, you know, as we go into December and November. But I can't do anything about it when it starts getting wet on the roof because I won't be able to put holes in the roof and properly seal them. So what I've done is I've ordered a second 100 watt monocrystalline panel from Renogy. It is on its way. Hopefully it arrives before we get another snowfall. Now we did have one at the beginning of October and it was it snowed and then it went away and it's been quite sunny actually since then. Though I'm hoping that it doesn't rain or anything like that before I have a chance to actually install that panel. In the meantime though, uh, being parked gives me a unique opportunity. I'm actually able to now tilt my solar panels because I won't have to go up and down every day to do that. So what I've done is I've gone and bought some aluminum angle and I got two eight foot lengths of that and then I got a U-channel which will serve as a support. Basically I saw a tilt mount for RVs on Renogy's site if you're in the States, it only costs you like 40, 50 bucks or something like that. In Canada, it costs you 80, which is a lot of money, and I don't want to pay that much for it. So I'm going to build my own version of this. I looked at a few designs, and the main reason why I'm going with this one is because it's reversible. You can, you can tilt it in, in sort of in either direction, and also it can lie completely flat. This is not going to be any higher than the original mounts for the Renogy panel. So I started by cutting the aluminum angle into 22 inch lengths. That's the width across for my solar panels. And then I drilled holes on either side. These are going to be the pivot points. A bolt will go through these and then that will act as sort of a hinge. Because the aluminum angle has a squared edge, it won't actually pivot. So I actually had to round off those corners with the hacksaw to make that work. I cut the U-channel into 11 and a half inch pieces, drilled a hole through either end, and then also rounded off the corner. These are going to serve as props, which will be used to actually prop up the panel and choose the angle. I then drilled holes every two inches along the main struts. These are going to be used to adjust what angle the solar panel is tilted at. Once I'd actually built the two aluminum mounts, I went up onto my roof and I took off the screws and the old mounts that were holding my solar panel in place. And then I used uh, the same hardware to attach the new brackets down onto the roof 
and then attach the actual panel to those brackets. Uh, unfortunately, I ran out of light and I also realized that I forgot to finish doing the holes all the way across on the angles. They would have worked perfectly fine as is, but if I ever turned this uh, van around and I needed to tilt them to what is now the north side of the vehicle, to the passenger side of the vehicle, uh, if I was parked the other way, I wouldn't be able to do all the tilting maneuvers. So I took the solar panel off and I re-drilled some holes, put it back together, and now it is working perfectly. Now you can see what this looks like when it's tilted. Properly tilting your solar panels can get, I've seen statistics say that it's anywhere between 10 and 30, but a more likely uh, percentage would be a 20% increase. So that's not insignificant when you have a small uh, setup like mine. And I've really noticed that, um, of course, it's going to make more difference, just sort of the angle of being flat and how low the sun is now. I was able to go online and find an actual um, like calculator basically that you put in your, your information it's able to tell you what angle uh, at what time of the year to tilt your panels based on your actual location which is really handy. I also did some fiddling around um, with some other calculator things just to see about adding multiple panels because of course the second panel is in the mail. So when that comes I have a couple of options and I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run those by you guys real quick and maybe you guys have some suggestions for how I can do this. So how much did I actually save by making these mounts myself? Well, like I said, the retail price of one of these racks is $79.99. And I actually made two sets of racks, one for the second panel, which is arriving uh, in probably next week, for $61 Canadian dollars. So really, they cost me about $30 uh, to make. And I already had the hardware to install them, so um, we might add a little bit more on that. But that's less than half the price of buying this thing new. That's a pretty good savings for me. And anything that I can do cheaply right now is really good for me. <laughs> now I'd like to at some point get at least three panels. That's the goal is to get 300 watts of solar. However, I'm just buying another 100 watts of solar right now because that's what I can afford. So with three panels, I can fit uh, them side by side I can fit three and, and you know have a symmetrical layout and all that on the back part of the van. Now, of course, I could add solar panels on the front, but I'm not actually able to clean those through the hatch. I'd actually have to get up on the roof and clean those, whereas if they are on the back of the van, I can actually stand on my stool um, with a squeegee and clean those off, push the snow off of them in the wintertime, and that is really important, the convenience of that. So I want to keep the, the plan for the back. Now, I cannot have all three of those tilted without blocking each other unless they actually go the other way if they go uh, if they, they hinge on the short end. Now this style of mount I don't feel comfortable with uh, mounting them like that. Um, for a small angle like you might have in June that would be fine but for the super steep like 74 degree angle that I'd have them mounted at in December uh, this area gets a lot of wind. I'm basically creating a kite and inviting damage to my solar panels. These mounts, the way that they're designed, if you put them uh, in that vertical position, they won't be terribly stable. In this more horizontal position, they're absolutely great. So if I ever got three panels and I wanted to tilt them that way, I would have to build a much bigger, much sturdier, taller two um, rig in order to do that. So that's why I'm not doing, um, not going to be able to have them all tilted at the same time. So what I'm thinking is that they will go across the roof horizontally, um, the, with their lengths lining up with the length of the van, if that makes sense, the way that this one is now. And then really I'd only be able to have one tilted up uh, at a time, and that would be the one that's furthest away from the sun. So the northmost panel would be tilted up, and the other two uh, would just have to remain flat. Now most of the time during the summer, when I'm driving this around, they're all going to be flat, because I don't, it's, I don't really want to get up on the roof every day and tilt the panels. Um, and when I only had 100 watts of solar, that was totally fine in, in, in the summer. Um, having that flat panel was fine. So I will see how it goes uh, with one tilted and one flat to begin with. And if for some reason, you know, if I still find that adding the tilting is really going to be necessary, then I might consider moving one of these panels up to the front of the vehicle. 
A um, couple things about the front of the vehicle, like I said, I don't have access to it easily to clean it, um, to remove snow. And also there's that big amber light there which could cast shadows on a flat panel um, depending on how I was parked, although I'm not sure exactly um, how big a deal that one is. So I did some calculations and between April and August I am able to have two panels tilted, one on either side the way they are now, like if I added a second one on the other side of the vehicle from where mine is. Uh, other than that, I'm really only able to have one uh, solar panel tilted at a time, otherwise it will block the other one, there'll be shading and that, that'll cause more issues than having just a flat panel. Of course, originally I was only going to have a flat panel. Most van life people have flat panels. Uh, I'm just finding that because of this particular situation of being parked, that gives me an opportunity. I needed to um, mount them anyway, and it's not that much money when it's only $30 for one of these mounts. So that's a pretty good um, investment and opportunity for me. If Even if I only have one, you know, however it works, um, it's a option, and options are always good in my opinion. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I would really please appreciate it if you guys have any thoughts on how I can get the most out of my solar panel layout um, with only being able to have uh, three panels sort of side by side like that. Um, I'm curious if anyone has uh, any cool suggestions or anything like that, or what do you guys think about these tilting uh, mounts if you find them useful or anything like that. All right, that's all for me today.